If you are considering buying a Geiger counter, please watch this video before making your purchase. You might change your mind and buy something far better, such as this Radia Code 102. The device that I am reviewing today, is not a Geiger counter at all, instead, it is a fully fledged, gamma ray spectrometer. This class of device, eats Geiger counters for breakfast. Before I continue, I want to clearly state, this channel is not being sponsored by any company, including the one that makes the Radia code, and I bought this product myself. After having used it for a little time, I have decided to make a review video. Perhaps, the simplest way to understand what a gamma ray spectrometer does, is to think of how a prism works, to separate rays of white light, into their component colors. Gamma rays are just photons, like visible light. So a gamma ray spectrometer, allows us to separate these extreme rays, into their frequencies, just like colors, but conventionally referred to, as their energy levels, and are measured in electron volts. Because a spectrometer knows, not only how many gamma rays it has detected, but also the energy level of each one, it can construct a fingerprint of the radiation it is exposed to. A Geiger counter, for example, can only count how many rays it has detected, and obtains no information about the actual energy levels involved. Being able to create a fingerprint of the spectrum of the radiation, means that a gamma ray spectrometer, can actually identify the radioactive materials that it is exposed to. You can think of a traditional Geiger counter, as being like a simple tally counter for radiation. But, a gamma ray spectrometer, is basically a tricorder, for radioactive sources. Yes. You heard that right, it's a fucking tricorder, for radiation, that you can actually buy, and it costs the same as a mid-range Geiger counter. There are many ways to create a gamma ray spectrometer. The Radia code device uses, what is called, a scintillation crystal detector. This has another important advantage over traditional Geiger counters. Scintillation detectors, can have very high levels of sensitivity, far higher, than Geiger Muller tubes can achieve. The reason for the difference in sensitivity, is just down to the probability of an interaction, between the sensing material and a gamma ray. In a Geiger Muller tube, the active material is a low pressure gas, but in a scintillation detector, it is a solid crystal. The higher density of matter, increases the interactions, and thus the sensitivity. The radio code, appears to be about 50 times more sensitive to gamma rays than my old BR6 Geiger counter. Anyway, enough of the background information, let's talk about what this product can actually do. The radio code, can connect to an Android application via a Bluetooth connection, there also appears to be an iOS app in development. There is also a PC application too, and this connects to the device via USB. The included smartphone application, has a lot of features, and is one of the real highlights of this product. Albeit, a little bit clunky. The application can log the dose rates over time, and in either sieverts or rads per hour. It allows spectrum accumulation, and isotope identification. Perhaps, the most interesting feature of this application, is the ability to map the dose rates, and then overlay onto a Google, or OpenStreets map. In its current form this feature, is little more than a very cool gimmick, I will talk about how it could be made more useful, later in this video. From the application, the user can also set up the device, and control its operation. The Radia Code device is not the only, consumer level gamma ray spectrometer that has these features, but it is one of the best, when it comes to actual execution. The Bluetooth connection appears to be very robust. In the month or so, that I have used this device, I didn't experience a single connection issue. 
It seems that the engineers, went to great lengths to ensure a good quality, Bluetooth signal, even when being held in the hand. They have employed a 3D structure antenna, instead of a cheap printed type, like most other devices do. I also should mention the Windows application. This is actually, the weak spot of the product. This doesn't have all the features of the smartphone application and can be pretty buggy in places. That said, it does have the features that I was really looking for, the ability to extract the spectrum and dose rate data in CSV format, but the UX is not very intuitive. Initially, the PC software would crash every time I connected the radio code via USB, but, to their credit, the radio code software team managed to get the issue fixed within the day. And they did that, even though I was behaving like a complete irate dickhead. The PC application does feel like a bit of an afterthought, which is a shame, because for me, the PC is where I do the data processing that I need. Before I show you just how sensitive this device is to low levels of background radiation, I want to tell you about an amazing discovery that I have made. Up until now, it has generally been accepted, that background radiation is a complex mixture of, numerous sources of photon and particle emissions. What I have discovered, is that background radiation is, in fact caused by the radioactive decay of a totally new element. As the discoverer of this new element, I have named it, background sorcium and, given it the chemical symbol, the S. This element, has quite interesting chemical properties. And it is located on the periodic table right around here. Um, um, now where was it? Uh, um, sort of, nearby here. Yes. Exactly here. Yes, is all around us. It completely surrounds us, and everywhere we look, there is some amount of this, the yes, being emitted into the environment. Background sorcium, is frankly, a really amazing element. It is a weak emitter of alpha and beta particles, it emits gamma rays, some x-rays and also some neutrons and protons. In fact, it even emits some antimatter. Fancy that. Humans, are also a very strong source of these, BS emissions. Each and every one of us, should be careful, to try and limit our personal BS emissions, and make regular dose rate measurements, to help reduce the incidences, of accidental releases of this powerful form of radiation. One day, I hope to be able to discover materials, that can provide effective shielding against the dangerous emissions from BS. Until then, we all need to be very careful, because BS will accumulate within the tissues of our brains and, will very quickly, result in irreversible neurological damage. Now, let's make a background radiation measurement, before it all gets sucked up by the brain dead. When I make a measurement, of pure background sorcium, I get exactly the same levels as I normally do in this location. This measurement was made, inside a high-rise concrete building, so the levels are about double that, of outside and away from large structures. The reason that the indoor levels are higher, is simply because when you surround yourself with a building, there is just more stuff nearby, that can contain natural radionuclides. Here I am collecting the spectrum of the detected gamma rays. This is just a background measurement, so I am not expecting anything much to show up in terms of major identifiable peaks. Okay, next I am going to try some small tungsten welding rods, that have have had a tiny amount of thorium-232 added to them. Thorium is a radioactive metal, and here we can see that the radio code device is recording a level of approximately, three times the background level, but, is still very low. When we look at the spectrum, we can see a distinctly different picture, 
to what we saw when we did the background measurement. The radio code device contains a library of radioisotope decay chains, and this helps the user to identify the actual radioactive materials that are present. In this case, clearly, thorium-232. Now, I am going to open up an ionization chamber from a smoke detector, and see if the radio code 102 can identify the americium-241 that is contained inside. This isotope undergoes an alpha decay process but, also has some gamma ray emissions within its decay chain. This americium source, is emitting radiation at about 10 times that of background, so the time needed to find good strong peaks, is somewhat shorter. Here, the classic twin peaks of americium, are clearly visible. Now I am going to make a measurement of a lump of uranium ore, that I found on a family trip to an abandoned uranium mine. Does that sound like a strange trip for the kids? Well, maybe, we are just a rather strange family. Uranium-238 is a little more interesting to detect. It doesn't itself emit gamma rays, so the radio code cannot directly identify it. It actually shows the presence of radium-226. The reason for this, is that moving down in the decay chain of uranium-238, it is radium-226 that is the first reasonably long-lived isotope, that has a strong gamma emission. And this particular isotope of radium, is unique to this decay chain. I really like the compact size and one-handed operation of this product. But I will admit, that I have some reservations, when it comes to the design philosophy of the look and feel of the device. The design language appears to have the following aesthetic goals. Innocuous and discreet design. A portable and handheld device. Design for one-handed use. Three-button user interface. A rounded, non-threatening shape. And, literally designed, to not be eye-catching. I'm sure I have seen, this exact design language, used on another type of product. I can't help, but get the feeling, that the industrial designer that created this shape, had previously designed blood glucose monitors. Because that is what the radio code device looks like to me. And if you don't agree, then that means that you spotted it. Did you spot it hiding there? Before I rate this product, I just want to talk a little about Geiger counters, and value for money. I think it is useful to see where the radio code product, fits into the price versus performance graph. Mostly, products fit in where you would expect, with one notable exception, the Gamma Scout. This piece of shit, costs more than double that of the radio code, and has a complete and utter lack of anything resembling, good build quality. Comparing the radio code to Geiger counters, is a little unfair, so I just want to touch upon the sensitivity of the product. Here I am comparing the volume of the scintillation crystal that is used in two other, comparable gamma ray spectrometers. I have not had a chance, to test the ray SID device yet, but I do own a Mesol KC761, and it does indeed record over twice the count rate, of the radio code product. Okay, let me first share, what I most like about this product. The tiny form factor, and the intuitive, one-handed user interface, are the best aspects of this product. Next, there is the Android application. This is probably the best one available, for any contemporary product. Being able to easily identify the exact isotope, is one of those features that, once you have it, 
you cannot imagine how you got by without it. And then, there is the sensitivity of this detector. When I first used this product, I was amazed, with the sheer number of events it could detect. There are also many other great features of this device, but this video can only be so long. When looking for the negative aspects of the product, I am going to be totally honest, I had to work hard to find any. Firstly, I have to say, the aesthetics are not really to my liking, frankly the device looks like a blood glucose monitor, instead of a scientific instrument. Next, the Windows application is definitely in need of some work. It is a little clunky and has some bugs. For my own needs, the PC application is quite important, so I do hope that they are able to work to improve this over time. Finally, it should be pointed out, that this product is not the most sensitive, gamma-ray spectrometer, available within the consumer space. To be honest, that is a somewhat mute point, given that this product has a price point, similar to that of a mid-range Geiger counter. I am going to give this product four and a half stars. I just can't bring myself to award five stars, to any product that I review, just on principle. This device, cost me $372, at the time of purchase. This means it costs half as much as this creaky old piece of shit, which seems to have a rather dedicated following amongst the less well-informed folks. Earlier, I promised, to discuss what I think would be a significant improvement to the mapping feature of the product. In this video, I discussed how there are literally, tens of thousands of missing radioactive sources around the world. It is an open secret, that these have ended up in recycled metals, due to the actions of unwitting, or unscrupulous, scrap metal dealers. Nobody really knows, where all this contaminated, recycled metal, has ended up. However, it is a fairly safe bet to assume, that some of it will have made its way, into the rebar, used to build our homes and places of work. Used, in the construction of our transport infrastructure. And used in places, that we prefer to not even consider. If the Radia Code product, had an option to allow users, to opt into sharing some of their mapped radiation data, with a global, public database, then we stand a chance, of being able to find some of this contaminated material. It would be pretty straightforward, to ensure that the data is anonymous and preserves users' privacy. No governments, are going to be motivated to perform a full, countrywide, radiological survey. There is literally no upside for them to do so, after all, it is the government that will have to bear the costs of remediating any issues they find. So, like most important things, if we want this to get done, then we are just going to have to do this, for ourselves. Power to the people! Anyway, that is all I have for you today. Next time, I am going to review this interesting gamma ray spectrometer, the MESOL KC761. This device was a real surprise for me, that changed my expectations, forever. I hope you enjoyed my little video, or at least found some parts of it interesting. If you want to see more of this kind of video, you could always press the subscribe button. This is not a commercial channel, nor will it ever be, so I can say what I want, and YouTube's algorithm can go and get f***ed. Thank you for your time.